Okay, so um, what I am going to do now is that I'm going to work on the uh, idler and the idler assembly. So uh, as I said in my previous video, I want to change uh, the bearings used in the idler, uh, which I'm going to show you right now. I want to change those bearings um, because there are 625 bearings, so 16 by 5 by 5 millimeters. And those bearings are currently unavailable in Canada at least, and they are super expensive and uh, delivery times are uh, a lot longer. So what I'm going to replace them with is uh, with uh, 608 bearings, which are 22 by 7 by 8 millimeters. And um, these are way more uh, affordable and accessible uh, since they are also used in skateboards and fidget spinners. So there's uh, at least some uh, kind of stock uh, still here uh, in Canada. And they also tend to be uh, cheaper uh, even in normal times. So that's what we're going to do right now. So in order to do that, there is going to be a few things that we're going to do. We are going to have to um, increase, of course, the size of the hole for the bearing, um, but also push the bearing a little bit back, because if I can show you, there is an isolate. Okay, so there is a small gap between the, the part where there is the bearing and the uh, extruder. And if this, uh, if we have bigger bearings, then this part is going to be blocked off by the bigger bearing and we won't be able to uh, put um, filament in there. So uh, in order to prevent that, we're, we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, push the bearings more on the center of the uh, idler body. And we are also going to do one thing that is going to uh, make this build easier and more affordable is that we are not going to use the f their fixation system. So you see, you use little metal pens uh, here and here uh, to, um, to uh, keep the bearings in place. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to print uh, the, the bearing, uh, the idler uh, vertically. And I'm going to pause at this height, so um, just at the top of where the bearing is supposed to be. And I'm going then to place it uh, in place. So uh, right now I'm going to show you a clip of uh, what that looks like to make it clearer. And uh, this makes it um, easier and cheaper to do uh, since you don't have to buy extra parts. So uh, with that same intention, what we're going to do is that instead of um, using a metal pin for the idler body to rotate on. So instead of using a pin as a nexus and the shaft of the motor, we're going to keep the shaft of the motor and we are going to uh, replace that with uh, a 3D printed axis on the idler body, which is uh, that part right here. And um, we are going to replace that with a bearing mount, so there's going to be a bearing here, then you place the idler inside and uh, you can just put the motor in and it will work uh, with less parts. So uh, now uh, I believe this is everything I wanted to do. I will add some uh, detail as I'm designing it into uh, OpenSCAD. So let's jump right into this. Okay, so we are right now on the uh, OpenSCAD software and we're going to edit the idler body on here uh, because this is uh, the type of software where it was created. So it's not like Fusion 360 where you can drag and drop and uh, interact with the uh, visual design. It's code based, so you have to uh, write down uh, basically everything that you want to do, but it will still, it will still be easier uh, than trying to use the Fusion 360 uh, model. So, um, the file was downloaded from uh, the Prusa official GitHub, and uh, uh, so it's basically the original file that they used to print uh, the uh, idler body, uh, but we're going to edit it uh, in order to accommodate for the bigger bearings. So, uh, let's start right now. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to uh, remove the um, the holes for the uh, different uh, pins that we that are here. So the metal rods that go uh, to uh, hold the bearings in place. So uh, let's delete them. So you can see that this idler segment uh, L and R, uh, which stand for left and right, uh, from what I've seen. Um, are basically uh, almost the same except that uh, the R are for these two and the L is for these three. So the thing that we're going to do is we're going to delete uh, this part on both of them. Uh, it is necessary uh, to make a slightly bigger opening. Uh, I guess it may have been useful because they were using smaller bearings, but in my case I'm using a uh, bigger bearing so I won't need this part. Um, and it was also because they were uh, placing the bearings and not printing it in place. So they yeah, they have to make the hole bigger so that you can slide the bearing in and then put the rod. And when I'm actually uh, putting the bearing directly onto the print uh, from the top, I don't need to worry about that. Um, so then we have to remove these uh, three cylinders, which are basically the opening for uh, the pins um, for the, the rods, the metal rods. So let's remove them. And once this is done, you can see that they are, uh, for the most part, closed. So uh, then there is one thing that we want to do is we want to uh, make the opening uh, bigger, but first we want to make the, the um, rod or the hole for the rod full. So instead of uh, making a hole where you can place the metal rod, we're going to make it a cylinder that we're going to print. So difference. Here and here as well. Basically it's the same on both sides. Okay. And now we should see that it is full and it has made a uh, proper axis for the bearings. So uh, now uh, the the size is still too small for the um, the new bearing. So we are going to uh, resize uh, the uh, different openings. Okay. So first. Uh, the new bearings are seven millimeters uh, wide, so let's change that six to an eight so that we have enough clearance on the top and bottom. Uh, that should make the openings a bit wider, exactly uh, that work well. And also the radius should not be 8.5, it should be um, 11.5 so that we have enough clearance for our 22 millimeter in diameter bearing. So this was the radius. So now we're going to do the same on the bottom, 11.5. And we're clearly keeping about the same clearances I, as they did, so uh, there should not be any problem. Um, so now uh, we have to edit the uh, axis for the, each bearing, uh, which is not 2.55 in um, radius uh, but it should be uh, 3.95 so that we can uh, it's a bit smaller so 4 would be perfect fit but since we want to slide it on we need a little bit of clearance uh, in order for it to be easily uh, in order to easily install install the bearings uh, once we have printed it so uh, y you have to keep that in mind so let's do that on both of the models Okay, so first, uh, the new bearings are seven millimeters uh, wide. So let's change that six to an eight so that we have enough clearance on the top and bottom. Uh, that should make the openings a bit wider. Exactly, uh, that work well. And also the radius should not be 8.5. It should be um, 
11.5 so that we have enough clearance for our 22 millimeter in diameter bearing so this was the radius so now we're going to do the same on the bottom 11.5 and we're cl keeping about the same clearances I as they did so uh, there should not be any problem um, so now uh, we have to edit the uh, axis for the each bearing uh, which is not 2.55 in um, radius uh, but it should be uh, 3.95 so that we can uh, it's a bit smaller so 4 would be perfect fit but since we want to slide it on we need a little bit of clearance uh, in order for it to be easily uh, in order to easily install install the bearings uh, once we have printed it so uh, you have to keep that in mind so let's do that on both of the models okay so um, now uh, you could say that we are done but actually we are not uh, even if we could fit all the bearings at that time at that point uh, we need to push them further in so that's what we're going to do now. In order to do that, you see here the minus 12 translation. Uh, we're going to reduce it to a minus 9, so it will be 3 millimeter closer to the center of the, uh, of the idler body. Uh, so that should make it more on the inside. And now we're going to do the same on the second pair of bearings and now um, most of the work is done you can still see that this part this part is to stop uh, the the idler from uh, rotating too much uh, so there is a stop on the body so that stops it from rotating once uh, it has um, uh, exceeded I guess the the rotation it should do so we are going to have to modify this for a few reasons so first here are the grooves in there that were initially made so they could slide the pin we don't need them anymore so that's what we're going to remove now okay so in order to do that we're going to scroll all, scroll, scroll down to removal openings and we don't need any of those so we're just going to delete all of them so uh, now you can see that we no longer have those grooves uh, but you may notice that we're starting to have a small problem here the bearing uh, is actually because it's bigger it's uh, actually eating a little bit away um, on the uh, stop part so we are going to edit the stop part so that it doesn't interfere with the bearing and then we're going to edit the one uh, on the body as well make it shorter so it uh, ha it touches on this side and on this side as well so uh, that's two things that we have to uh, fix okay so uh, in order to fix those two holes that we see inside the idler we first have to move that cylinder because it's actually a cylinder making those holes um, about six millimeters uh, to the left not six actually uh, I would say one plus seven eight millimeters to the left so that would be plus seven uh, let's see no it was plus eight in order to make it fit properly because we also had the clearance for uh, the bearing that I didn't take into account and now we need to make the uh, let's say uh, the, the difference shorter so the height, height of this should be uh, shorter so let's try six and six uh, seems to have worked perfectly actually so now you can see that the end stop is shorter and that it is um, uh, six millimeters uh, wide and that we have moved it a little bit so now that is good and should work we can notice um, another thing that we want to edit so it was this part we want to have a plastic axis coming out of this and no longer the the metal pin 
with the bearing so that should make the design simpler and you can also see that there is this big hole going through all the way and uh, we actually don't need that because we are not putting or inserting any pin or any kind of thing in there in my design and I don't like the fact that it is coming through the bearing here and uh, we will remove that right now okay so in order to remove that hole uh, as you can see here I have the hole going through all the way and we can simply delete that line that is uh, making the hole uh, and as you see uh, it, keep, it keeps the uh, stepper motor uh, connector because this is a different part of the uh, CAD file. So now I have it uh, filled up all the way over here and you can see there's some weird things going on here but it's normal I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fill this up and make uh, uh, an axis come out this way. Okay so to fix that you first don't need the shaft bearing part so I will simply delete it Okay, not like that. So once you've deleted it, the only thing that I need to add is uh, an axis uh, to for the idler to rotate on. So I'll create that right now. So you create a cylinder uh, that comes out this way, uh, that is one centimeter long, and that has a radius of 3.95, which gives me the 0 0.1 millimeter uh, of clearance that I uh, 0 0.0 no 0 0.1. Of clearance that I need uh, on um, this uh, particular design. So once you have done that, uh, you should see that we have uh, an axis coming through there, and uh, the build seems to be ready. Okay, so then now that this is all done, uh, you can render it and then uh, convert it to an STL file. And I will get back to you in the slicer. I'm using Cura, but you can do this in any other slicer. And show you exactly what you need to do in order for your printer to stop at a specific layer height. And also the print settings that I recommend uh, for this specific part with this specific modifications. Okay, so uh, now that you're in uh, Cura, I'm just going to show you how you can uh, slice that thing so that you can put it in place and do it. So first things first, you have to write it 90 degrees so that it faces up and looks like a big tower. And um, what you're gonna do then is uh, you're gonna want support, but here's the problem. Uh, let's say that you want to generate support and you do generate support everywhere. Uh, once it is sliced, what you're going to see quickly is that um, since we want to place the bearings and then continue the print um, we want to be able to actually place them in when we pause the print but here if there's infill we won't be able to do this as you see there's infill here we won't be able to place a bearing so what you do is that you don't click generate supports and what you add is custom support so this way you support only the parts that you consider need support and you don't cover uh, any of the bearing holes so that they are free. Okay, so I'm going to do that quickly. It does not need to be perfect, but cover as much of this as possible. It's not the cleanest solution. I could have split the model into two pieces in order to have it uh, do uh, full supports on the, the lower part and then no support in the upper part where you have the bearings. The other part you want to support is this part with the uh, stop. So let's place some supports there, there. Uh, now there's also the other small side where I need support okay 
Um, and now you should have supports everywhere. I think that it's going to be able to bridge that properly. These are uh, holes, so it should be good. Um, and now we just slice it without support. So let's check that I have all the settings. I'm going to be printing it at a 0.1 layer height. Uh, 0.2 wouldn't change much because it's a functional part. But since we're using uh, 0.5, uh, 0.05 millimeter clearances, um, I have uh, I would probably need uh, uh, that layer height so that we don't like eat into the the clearances uh, during the print. Uh, so uh, now uh, basically that's it. In fill density, I will do 20% because I don't think I need more for that if. The, the part is too weak, I will reprint it with 100%, but I want it to be to print fast. So uh, that's it, build pad edition, we'll do a brim. And now I will slice it. So now it's going to take a bit more time since you have uh, all those custom supports that it first needs to, uh, to uh, create and uh, see where they are. So, this usually takes a few minutes to begin slicing. One minute, 37 seconds later. Okay, so it has just started slicing. It took a few minutes uh, and it is a four hour and 56 minute print. So let's see how it looks. Uh, I don't want that. I simply want the height. So you see the, the it's not the cleanest method, but it will work, it will do the job, and as you can see, the bearings are totally free of any support. So, uh, once this is done, uh, you're going to need to pause uh, the print head every time you are at the top of uh, the bearing. You don't want to print this layer that covers it, you want it to be exactly there. So as you can see, uh, I will need to write the layer head where it does that um, down. But when I move it with my cursor on the side, I jump a few, uh, at least two or three layers each time. So in order to be precise enough, what you're going to do is use your arrow up and down keys. You go up until you see that it is starting to cover uh, the bearing segment. And once you have found the first layer, uh, that where it covers, you go back uh, down once and you write down that number. So here we have 328. Uh, now you repeat that with each bearing uh, bearing placement. So here, go up, down, and now 468. So you're going to write all those down and what you're going to do after that is that you're going to go here in the settings or uh, I believe in uh, extensions, uh, post processing, modified G-code. So this opens that and this opens the exact same. So um, what you're going to do is add uh, five pause at height uh, functions. And every time you're gonna choose layer number, uh, the pause layer, uh, you're gonna do uh, the one that you uh, measured. So personally it was 328, 468, 608, 748, and 888. Um, so now you're gonna set the standby temperature. Uh, and uh, this should stay about the same. So for me, I'm going to keep it the same, 200. Every time I don't need to change the temperature and display text, you can display something if you want, but it is not necessary right now. Uh, so now uh, this is good. Uh, so I will close it and then we are going to slice it once again. And after that, we are going to start the print. Okay, so uh, now we are just going to save to removable drive. Uh, let's change the name that we know what it is. It is the idler. It's going to take four hours and 56 minutes. 
so now we're going to save it once again with the new name and uh, now let's go print it and I will show you the process of putting the bearings in and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so sorry for the build footage, uh, I may have had corruption issues, but you simply slide the bearing in and it should spin freely. Uh, once you have uh, put the bearing on the, the shaft, just check that it is spinning properly. Uh, and then you can simply restart the printer, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, sometimes when you pause your printer, some filament will like squeeze out. Uh, just uh, extrude a bit before restarting uh, so that you're sure that your filament that is ready to go in here. I am restarting the print and making it go over. Okay, so this is a time lapse of uh, the print. I actually had uh, issues on the first print because uh, I had layer skips uh, because one of my bit wasn't tension enough. Uh, so that is fixed and you can see that the print went uh, flawlessly. Okay, so now you can see the final result in all its glory. And uh, as you can see, the, the, all the bearings are spinning freely and uh, I'm just try, going to try to show you how the uh, shaft works. Uh, so basically you have a bearing uh, on top of that. The bearing is going to be on a mount on the body and then it's going to spin freely on it. So that's all for today and uh, thanks for watching.